What is going on my fellow game developers? My name is Muddy Wolf and today I'm going to be continuing our 2D platformer tutorial and in this one we're going to set up some danger zones where essentially if you fall in the water or be hit by anything that will kill you, it will kill you and respawn you at the start of each level. So as you can see here we can happily jump across the top but as soon as we fall into the treacherous water our player disappears and we are respawned back at the start. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, guys, I just want to mention you can get the source code for this tutorial and every other lesson in this tutorial on the Patreon. The link is down below. You have to become a Beowulf tier member, but that just gets you access to all of the previous Godot tutorial source code, including some Unity projects as well. So if you want access to that, then check the link down in the description. It also helps support the channel. So the first thing we want to do is go to our level one scene. So we have this level one scene and we have a bunch of water in here. Now this is technically a danger to us and we kind of want to set up a collision that when we collide with this we are going to die but just to start with let's actually set up a point let's just create a new child node 2d which we're just going to rename to player start now this is going to be the position our player spawns in and currently it is set to zero zero which is fine for our character but let's say you want him to spawn somewhere else let's say over on this side we can move the spawn point over here and we're going to have the player spawn at this spawn point. Now we've got that player start, let's go into our level script and we just want to reference this in here. We're going to say far player or level start position and we can just give this a node 2D. Now I can select this, go back into our 2D scene, select our level and we can drag over our player star into this position here to set its value. The next thing we want to do is set up a danger object or a scene that we can add into our scenes to cover the dangerous areas in the game. So to do that, all I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, create a new scene of a node, and we are going to look for an area 2D node. Now the area 2D is a node that uh, can detect when bodies or even other areas enter this zone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this to Danger Zone and we're not actually going to, so you can see we have an error here and it says there is no shape so it can't collide. Please add a collision shape 2D. We're not going to add that here because we want to be able to choose different custom shapes depending on the objects or the uh, enemies or depending on what essentially is a danger to us. We might want different shapes. So we're not going to add that here. However, we are going to attach a script we're going to go into, well, first, actually, let's save this scene. So we're going to save scene, go to scenes, entities, and I'm going to create a new folder called object, obstacles. Now, in here, I'm going to add in our danger zone script, uh, sorry, our danger zone scene, and we're going to add in our danger zone script to this as well. Now, this zone is going to be really simple. What we're going to do is we are going to get a signal for body entering this area. So when a body enters this area, we're going to create a signal which will come here. But before we do that, we're going to go to our player scene. So we're going to go down to scenes, player, and inside of the script, we want to scroll down to the bottom and we want to add in two new, well, two features essentially. Now I'm going to set a function called handle danger. And we're going to set this to be a void. And in here, we just want to say, we're just going to print player died, just so we can check if it's being called properly in the console. We're then going to set the visibility to be false. We then want to set up at the top here a new far boolean, which is going to be called can control. We're going to say it's a boolean and sell it equal to true by default. We're then going to come into our physics process and we're literally just going to say if we cannot control, we're going to return. So what we're saying here, if not can control, which means if we can't, if this is false, basically, we're going to return out. We're going to return out of this and not run anything in here. This is just going to mean when we die, we can set it to be not can control and that way we can no longer, our player will no longer move. We can then go into our handle danger again and we can just set the can. So when we are put through danger, we can say can control is equal to false. 
we can then say await get tree now the, the reason we're doing this is going to create a timer so we're going to say create timer and then we can pass the amount of seconds we want to wait before doing so i'm going to say one second and we're going to wait for the time out signal to be triggered so all this means is we're going to wait for the timer we've just created here to run out or time out and then we're going to do the rest of the code and we're going to create a uh, basically a um script called reset player which we're going to set or sorry a function we're going to call reset player we do not need to set that here and then underneath this we're going to create call function reset player i've named this wrong here we're going to set this to a void and in here we're going to set our global position equal to our c or sorry our level manager dot loaded level so we're going to get the current level we're on and then we're going to look for the level start position and get its global position so we go back to our level you'll see here we have our level start position and we're just calling this and getting the position off that area and setting our player back to it. Also, I realize I spelled this wrong again. It should be reset player. My bad. And then under here, we can now set visible equal to true again and can control equal to true as well. This is going to reset our player. So we're going to wait one second and then reset the player. The reason we've split this into a separate function is just in case we want to reset our player instantly at any point, we can do. Now back in our danger zone script, as I said, we're going to get a signal for this. So what we want to do is select the area, go over to node and select signals. Then we can go down to body entered and click connect. We can select the danger zone and you can give this method a name. I'm just going to leave it as default. And in here, we're going to do a simple check. We'll say if body is player. And all we're doing here is saying if the body is of type player, we will then say body dot handle danger also i've just noticed we do not have a class called player on our player script so what we're going to do is go to our player script and we're just going to give this the class name of player this just makes it easier to reference inside of other scripts and now all we're going to say is basically when we enter a danger zone it's going to call our script to handle the danger and actually set us straight to it so now we have that, all I want to do is go back to our 2D scene at level one. Under our tile map, I'm going to add in a, or sorry, I'm going to add in our danger zone. And in here, we are going to add in a collision shape 2D. Now I'm going to select this collision shape, go to inspector and change it to be a rectangle shape. And then I'm going to move the danger zone down. Oh, the danger zone is going to be moved just down into the water area so we're going to just bring it just above the water here 56 seems to be about right to match that water level and then in here we're going to get our zone and we're just going to drag it to match the areas we want to die when we walk on it and there you go this area now is going to be the danger zone for this i've also just realized in our danger zone area we want to go to our collision map and we want to make sure we select the right ones for our player. So I'm actually going to create a new layer under 2D physics and I'm going to call this the player layer. Um, and it's going to be the layer the player is on. We're also going to then make sure we set the mask for this to be our player and we're going to uncheck dynamic. Now we do not need a layer for our danger zone because it is not being it is not monitorable, meaning no one's actually going to be monitoring this. The only thing that's going to happen is this is going to be checking if the player falls into it. So we just want a mask. So a layer is the current layer this object is in, whereas a mask is what we're trying to look for. So what this collision is looking for, and we're looking for the player layer. So obviously to get this to work, we need to go to our player, select our player, go to our collision and change his layer from static to player. We can also set him to be a dynamic object because he will also move. This is something you can do, is set him on multiple layers as well. We also want the mask to be static and dynamic. 
and also danger because this is something we may want to check for as well maybe we do want to monitor so one thing we could do is in our danger zone we could set this to layer 3 which is our danger layer although we don't necessarily need to i'm just doing this for the sake of having a layer for each item so back at level one this should now be all set up with the same collision masks we need we should be able to hit play and hopefully we shouldn't fall through the ground that's good if you do fall through the ground just make your player make sure your player layer and your static layer can actually collide now once we have this once we fall into the water it will wait and spawn us back so as you can see we fall in and we are teleported back to the position we want and there you go you can see that's working pretty well and it will teleport us back anytime we fall into a danger zone now you can use this to set up way more things than just water you can set up lava you can set up walls spike traps anything you want with this method it's super simple and we'll be adding more obstacles in the game later on which uses the danger zone collision all right guys that is the end of this lesson in the next lesson we're going to be doing something completely different so let me know what you want to see being added to this game whether that be an enemy ai or something else like a bounce pad or double jump or something like that let me know down in the comments what you would like to see come out of this series and i'll try and get onto as many of these um suggestions as i can now once again if you want to get the source code you can go down below select the patreon and the lesson there'll be a link down below to the uh folders or the downloadables where you can download um, each lesson lesson by lesson if you have a beta tier on the patreon which supports the channel if also if you want to join our discord server the link is also down below it's a community full of a bunch of cool people so don't forget to check that out and that's it for this one so don't forget to leave a like smash that subscribe button and i'll see you in the next one peace out